SR71 is a combination of power and majesty. When you look at it, it just has a mystique that I think is going to live for generations and generations. I wish I could take everybody up to 85,000 feet because you can see 350 miles in any direction. You can see the curvature of the earth. Mountains, 10,000 foot mountains look flat. I can say without a question is that people knew that there'd be an SR flight and when they cranked those engines, the Buick Wildcat would scream. Then when the SR engines came on, people from around the base would just kind of stop. 117 decibels, that's what the SR was on takeoff. Six presidents used the SR-71 extensively because they had a great sense of confidence that it could in fact go out, collect the information required, and bring it back. Hundreds of missiles were fired at this airplane. I couldn't tell you how many times fighters came up to intercept me. I remember part of our missions when I was flying in the late 70s was fly through rings of SA-5s. We knew it was a very capable missile system. They weren't concerned too much about the SR, but they were very concerned about others, and they figured we could collect enough information and we could understand how that missile system would work. If we carried the nose camera, which we called the country's camera, it took a picture 72 miles wide. In 64 minutes, you would film 100,000 square miles. The film itself was 10,500 feet long, five inches wide. I would say my mission into the Middle East for President Carter was one of the most interesting. It was supposed to be three missions, but we picked up all the uh, targets in that first mission that they needed so that the next two missions were canceled. The airplane loved to fly straight and climb and accelerate. Most of the time at altitude, 80 to 85,000 feet, it was kind of like a, a nice Beamer or a Cadillac. But the airplane sensitivity was on a curve like this. So the faster you went, the airplane became much more sensitive and, and had to be handled much more delicately. The genius of this airplane was that the faster we went, it's the only airplane in the world, we burned less fuel. The greatest sonic boom that was ever set up, it was May 1972. Three SR-71s took off from Okinawa, Japan, and simultaneously overflew Hanoi at the same time. I've talked to the POWs. They said it scared the living daylights out of the guards because they'd never heard a shock like that. It didn't sound like a bomb, and they actually fled. We called the shock wave that came across the ground the sound of freedom. Can you imagine that sometimes we were tasked to overfly foreign ceremonies, to boom heads of state when they were greeting each other, to remind them that they were doing things that were counter to U.S. policy? As I go around the country and try to visit and work with museums, there's a whole new generations of uh, young men and women that are absolutely fascinated by this airplane. I was blessed in the Air Force because I was lucky to fly a number of, of Lockheed products. Lockheed was always there to bring in new innovation that met our needs as warfighters so we could better do our job. You know, it's a, a great celebration that in 100 years has led to uh, new vistas that who could have predicted. <laughs>